Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will see how a new developer can join the project, clone the repository, and integrate their own feature branch into the workflow. We will see how we can resolve a code conflict, as well as how to rapidly fix a bug on the main site. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So if we add additional people to our project, it would be very beneficial for them to have a documentation about how to install the application and to make it run on the local machine. This is done with a readme file and is placed directly into the repository. Let's create this file now. If you go to my repository on github.com slash awesome, you can grab the readme file here. So it's readme.md and we can also see the readme file straight underneath the repository. So here I've written down the basic steps how to install the project, what commands we should use in the terminal to get started, how to add a feature as a new developer. This is the part we looked into in the last video. And also, if applicable, how to install Tailwind CSS and Node. This is for example required for this project if people make CSS changes on the site. All right, so let's grab the file. I copy it from here. Then I go to my Visual Studio code and I select the source here and add a new file, readme.md. So readme in capital letters, okay? And paste the lines in here. Save. Now let's push this file straight to GitHub and merge to staging. So in my GitHub desktop, I see now I added this file. I commit to my branch and push origin. Then I create here a pull request and merge to the staging branch. I switch to staging branch here. Create pull request. Merge pull request and confirm merge. All right, let's go to our code. We are here in the main. Let's switch to staging. And we can see we have our readme file added to this repository. Awesome. So I will demonstrate now how somebody can join the team and set up this application on his or her local machine. For this, let's assume I'm Bobby, the new developer. So let's go through the installation. So first we create our local folder. So I call this folder awesome, underscore, and I join this team as Bobby. So this is Bobby's project folder. Now I open this folder in Visual Studio Code. So here we are now in Bobby's awesome folder. Now let's create a GitHub account for Bobby and connect GitHub, GitHub Desktop and our local folder here together. I created now a GitHub account for Bobby and in my GitHub Desktop application, I'm signing in now with this account. So in my application, I go to settings, sign out from Andreas and sign in as Bobby. All right, Bobby is signed in now. To get now the repository for this application, we need to add Bobby as a collaborator. For this, I have to change to my main account again to be able to invite Bobby to the project. I go to my repository, then to settings, then here collaborators, and then add people. And here now I search for Bobby using the email address I signed up with on GitHub. Okay, GitHub sent now an invitation to Bobby's email. Bobby accepts the invitation. And now Bobby is added to the project and can download the repository. Now Bobby can clone the repository by clicking on this tab on top, click add 
and clone repository. Then I select here the awesome repository to which Bobby has now access to. But here I get an error message telling me I can only clone to an empty folder. So let's add now the path to the correct folder. I've chosen here now our folder, but it wants to create here an untitled folder as well. Let's just get rid of it. Like that. Okay, now we selected our local path and now we can click clone. If we mouse over the name here, we can see that the local path points now to awesome underscore Bobby here. Let's check it out in our Visual Studio code. And we can see the files are added to this folder. Great. You might notice though that the readme file is not here. This is because we are in the main branch right now, which does not have this file yet. All right, let's make this application now running locally. For this, we need our static folder back, which includes the images and CSS styles. We did not push this folder to GitHub, if you remember. However, we need this folder to run our Django application locally. For this, we just duplicate the static files folder and rename it to static. So I select static files, copy and paste, and we rename it to static. All right, we can leave this folder as it is. And another file we included in our git ignore file is the env file, the environment variables. So I'm going to a underscore core dot env. And here we request now the information from a project member. This is sensitive data, so best share it in a secure way. Okay, these are my information here. I will change developer to Bobby and save this file. So next we create our virtual environment for this project, activate it and install all our required dependencies. So for this I'm going to my terminal here, new terminal. So I am on a Mac, so I'm writing Python 3. This is the Python version installed on my computer. Dash M, so module, VNV, and I call a virtual environment, VNV. Now the VNV folder is added to my project. And to activate my virtual environment, I write source VNV slash pin slash activate. All right, our virtual environment is activated. Now we install all our packages listed in the requirements.txt file. For this we write pip install dash r this stands for requirements and now we choose here the requirements file so requirements dot txt and it is installing now all the packages all right we can also run pip install upgrade so pip install dash dash upgrade pip All right, so next we do a migration and create a super user. So python manage.py migrate. Now the tables are being created and our SQLite database is added to our project. Let's create the super user now. Python manage.py create super user. I misspelled python, so again, python manage the pi create super user username bobby add a password and super user is created now let's spin up the server python manage the pi run server all right let's go to our browser and check it out so localhost 8000 and there we go, we have the application up and running. It is connected right now to the local database, therefore we have no data yet to show. But we successfully cloned and installed the application on our computer. 
Awesome. Now, you might be wondering, why do we see still the old button? This is because, firstly, Bobby is not a developer who created it. And secondly, because we are not connected to the remote database, which has this feature enabled. Let's modify this button now and see if we can cause a code conflict here. For this, we create our own feature branch. So at the moment, I'm on the main branch. Let's create Bobby's feature branch now. So new branch, feature, underscore hero button, underscore Bobby. Okay, create branch. All right, now we are in the right branch. Let's change some code. I go to the hero.html file. So this is in templates folder, includes hero.html. Here we have the feature toggle from last time. So I will change the button here slightly. I call it join us. And I also change the color. And now I add Bobby as an additional developer of this feature. So to a underscore posts, use to py. Here we have the hero button declaration. And here I check if Bobby is also a developer. So I write or feature enabled for Bobby. So this feature is enabled when Andreas is the developer or when Bobby is the developer. Okay, save this file. I also connect to the remote database now to have some data shown on the website. So let's go to our settings.py file and change Postgres locally to true. Then save this file and check out the website now. I refresh the page and we're now connected to the remote database and the button shows the change we made. All right. Let's push it to GitHub and merge it to the staging branch. So let's go to our GitHub desktop. We see here the files with the changes. I give it a title, new button. I commit to feature hero button Bobby. That's correct. Now I publish the branch because it doesn't exist yet on github.com. All right, and now I create a pull request. And I change here to merge into staging. All right, and create pull request. We can see here we have no conflict yet. And that's because this code change was based on the original code. So GitHub is treating it as a regular update. So we merge pull request here and confirm merge. All right, that worked like a charm. Now let's produce a conflict here. If I make a change now on the feature branch of Andreas, for example, changing the button color to blue, this should give me a warning because both feature branches are making a change on the same element and GitHub doesn't know how to resolve it. Let's test this now. So I made a very simple color change on the button now and we can see it reflected here in GitHub desktop. Now I push it to the feature branch of Andreas on GitHub. I create a pull request and merge it into the staging branch. And as we can see here now, it says here, can't automatically merge. That means we have a conflict. But we still click the button create pull request here. And here we get the message now, this branch has conflicts that must be resolved. I click the button Resolve Conflicts. And in this file, we can see where the conflict is. So this is the first version here. This is coming from feature underscore hero button underscore Andreas. So this is the incoming change. And this is the current version on the staging branch. So let's say the team decided to accept the incoming change as the correct one. So what I'm doing here is getting rid of all the other code. Like that. So here we have the one version we want to keep for this file. Okay, and then I click Mark as resolved. And 
Commit Merge. All right, now the conflict is resolved and we are good to go. All right, it's deploying now to the staging site. Let's have a look at the change. And we see this new button with a dark grey background color on the side. This is definitely not the best design, but I push it now to the main site anyway, so we can see how to rapidly fix something in the main branch. I merge here from the staging into the main branch. And the main site is now updated as well. Let's assume now we discover a bug on the live site, which needs to be fixed as soon as possible. For this we just apply the changes directly to the main branch now and push it back to production. So I switch to main here, then I fetch origin, and then I also pull origin, which basically means it is merging the latest state of the site into my local repository. Now I go back to my code, make the necessary bug fixes and test it locally. So I made now the changes, I add a title, commit to main and push back to origin. On the live side I refresh the browser and the updates are live. The only thing outstanding now is to merge the main branch also into the staging branch to reflect the bug fixes there too. So I'm merging here main into staging. And create pull request. Okay. This is all for this video, thank you for watching. In the next video we will write some Django unit tests to automate testing and to make sure new features don't break our site. I hope to see you there. Until next time, happy coding. Bye bye for now.